here with my friend Jonathan, we're talking about forages. And what I hear a lot from producers is they go, you know, my sheep and my goats, they're in pasture that's this tall and they're starving to death. Why is that? And they tell me, oh, look, you got the, the grass is going to seed, so they're eating grain. They feel like they're getting their grain supplements there. But Jonathan, what is the, what's the problem with this? What do you see when you see forage that's this tall? Well, when it starts to go to seed head, that means that the, the plant has, it's made a change. It's, um, it is going into a reproductive cycle. And so when it goes into a reproductive cycle, then what it's wanting to do is wanting to put its energy into producing the next generation, which is the seed. And it's taking that out of that cycle from a very uh, high value forage cycle, where that's where you get those nice tender leaves, you know, down here, this material here, this is, you know, this is, that's tender grass. And it's, and it's so moist, you yeah, can just about yeah. feel the water. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there's, I mean, this is, this has, this has forage quality. There's, there is not. There's no quality. Yeah, there's, there's no. This is about to die. There's no forage quality. Yeah. Also, when it comes to digestibility, you may be familiar with, uh, with uh, different calculations that talk about digestibility. Well, it's all, it's all about what percentage goes in the mouth that can be broken down and can be converted into calories, into energy, into that animal, as versus what has to pass through. High fiber passes through. Um, you know, if you have if you have any kind of grain holes, if you will, they're going to pass through. Something that is able to be digested quickly. Yeah. Also, what happens in this is it breaks down quicker. So that means that during, if you take a clock and a time, if you have very highly digestible material an animal what they can actually put in their stomach during a time frame of highly digestible versus not digestible um, they're going to be able to put more food that can break down quicker in that same amount of grazing the same amount of bites are more efficient they're only going to take x amount of bites per hour per grazing time so is it efficient or is it not if it can go through their system pass through convert then that's going to be more efficient if it's filling them off up if it's if it's uh, if it's hard for them to eat right so if i can take a bite and i can chew it and it, i can swallow it quicker versus i got to chew something that's coarse and and, and if uh, it's super yeah. long it's so super. long they can't they can't work with that super they long, need to work something long. short and moist and usually when it's super long even even this this stem here this stem is not tender right so you know a tender test if you pull it this way, does it split in half? If you turn it like this, what's the difference between that and taking a blade of grass? Okay, if I take a blade of grass, how tender is that? That's pretty tender, right? Pretty tender. Snap. Yeah. Can I tear it? That's tender. Yeah. Um, one of the things, it, uh, if you're in fescue country, um, Kentucky 31 is really coarse and tender. You know, when you tear it, it it's really hard to shred. If you take it and you run it across your wrist, you might actually be able to cut yourself. Yeah. That just doesn't break down very easily. Mm -mm. The other thing that we know is that when you're worried about parasites, we know that the parasites are only going to climb up about two or three inches. And so you don't want your grass this tall, but ideally four to six inches is what you want. And when the animal grazes, that can regenerate. And when the in other words, they, if we have rain and we have to have moisture to, for the grass to grow, if it's a good size and they, you keep it about that length, whether you have to mow these seed heads off and get it down, um, can, I, can I cut through here or am I wasting forage? If, if I have grass that's, that's going to seed like that, how would I work it? Would I bush haul get a certain height? How would I work that to make this thing stay? Because there's a lot, of, you can tell where they're grazing. Right. And they've kept it where they want to. We've had enough rain, enough moisture. It's coming up just a little bit and they're going there. But I have a lot of it that's going to seed. And I'm sure a lot of people have pastures. Maybe it's half eaten. Maybe it's all the way gone. Maybe it's all the way up. What's the best way to, you know, we know that uh, everything goes from a state of order to disorder. You know, this is disorderly conduct right. on this grass. Right. So we have to do some kind of creative energy to get it back to where we want it to be. Well, if you were to get, if you were to get down here and to look, Look, look horizontal there. And if you were to look at this area here, what do you see? You see, uh, you see mostly light through here. Mm -hmm. You don't see a thick forage right here. 
So you see mostly seed heads. So if you were to come and you were to cut this at this point, then what you end up is you, is you end up having this all even more accessible for, for a grazing animal, mm -hmm. right? You've just, you've just taken, you've taken this away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, whole, that, that's yeah. a, that's a whole lot easier for yeah. an animal to graze. Yeah. And if, and, and you mentioned a four to six inches, uh, the, the typical rule is take half, leave half. Uh, that's really, that's really talking about, you know, vegetative material. When you're at this stage, take half, leave half, you know, you need to do something with this if you can, uh, if, if, so that you can actually open up that canopy and make it easier accessible if you've got grazing animals. And then you're also, you're also making it accessible for, you know, for really valuable clovers like that, mm -hmm. right? Do you, do you want your animal to struggle to get this? Does that have to be all the way down somewhere yeah. in this? Yeah. This isn't really fun to actually get through. Right. And they're not just going to go, oh, great, good seed heads. Yum, my yeah. favorite. They're yeah. not going to do that. Um, and think about this. Just this is a good example. These are these are solar panels, right? So solar panels are what feed the plant. It's what gives it energy. In a grass, your solar panels. This is a solar panel. This is not a solar panel. If you're talking about keeping things vegetative, this does nothing for you. This does a lot for you. This does a lot for you. Mm -hmm. And the rule. The rule on the vegetative, take half, leave half. Why do you do that? Well, if you if you take this, and this is your solar panel, this is where your energy is coming from. Take this, and you take half of it. You still have a lot of solar panel to provide energy. If you say, well, there's still a lot of grass there. I don't want to waste it, and you take it down to here. Now you've got that's all you've got for that plant to be able to regenerate itself. That's a lot of work. It's going to take a lot more time. And because it takes more time to go from this length to this length than it did when you were higher. That's what you mean. So, so if you were to if you were to have a, a, a some sort of battery charged uh, mechanism and you had a little tiny eight volt battery versus you know a full forty volt battery, well, it it just you wouldn't have enough power. So this. If you're saying this this has got to grow, it's got to get enough energy, this is going to take care of my roots, there's just not much there. So take half, leave half, and make sure your make sure your uh, your time frame, your resting time frame, is long enough that it can recover. Because that way, if your roots recovered, then your energy's there, and then you've got then you've got more. And it's same thing, same thing with clovers. Clovers are, I mean, they're they're fantastic. One thing that's nice about clovers is that usually you can't. Some of them you can't graze too far down. There are certain species that, that like ladinos, they don't graze as well as some of the lower leaf white clovers. Um, but think about that when you've got clovers in there and if they're part of it, make sure that you still have got some solar panels in there for them to regenerate. So when if I go in here and, and bush hog half of this, have I wasted? Because when it falls to the ground, what does it do? Well, it does a lot. It does a lot. So we're not wasting. It, we're you, actually no, helping. No. no. So we're what helping you, the, the, so the what ruminants you, and the forage. So Debbie, if you had a hay operation in here, what you would be doing is you would be you would be taking at a, every certain intervals, every 25 days or something like that. You'd be coming in here and you'd be harvesting this and you'd be taking it off your land. All the nutrients that that plant generated, they'd go off the land. Mm -hmm. When you graze it, you cycle those through. And when you actually come in bush hog extra, you're kind of doing some of the same thing because then this material can then then break down into the ground and help build the soil. You're not wa you're not wasting it. And in fact, I venture to say that um, that if you look at some of your weed species and if you take just take a number for instance 12 inches, if if you said you know what I'm going to try to keep everything at 12 inches or lower as much as possible whether it's through grazing, and if not, I'm gonna take a bush hog out there. Then my guess is, I bet you'd have a lot less weeds that flower, that the weeds that flower above 12 inches, because they'd never be above 12 inches. Right. Right? But if you say, oh boy, you know, I just, I can't get out there, and then, and, uh, you know, there's still some, there's still some seeds, still some stuff out there, and I'll just let the animals get to it. And you got a whole bunch of weeds that are now flowering that you don't want those weeds, like thistle or something like that. 
then you've kind of created a problem that maybe you could have taken care of with bush hogging. I think bush hogging is a great thing, and especially it just recycles those nutrients. Mm -hmm.